Hello, I will be doing something new today where I try to explain my thought process for solving a problem. So I will try to do it for all the silver problems of this contest, which was the Yusuko January 2024 silver contest. Um, as a disclaimer, the editorial model solution is probably better than mine. Um, I wouldn't know, I haven't read it, but it's probably better. That's why it's the editorial solution. But I thought that maybe my thought process could prove helpful to anyone who is struggling with this problem. And also, if you have not tried the problem yet, please do. You should always give a problem your best attempt before you consult the hints, editorials, or any other solutions. So here is the problem statement, which I um, which I have taken from the Usical website. Farmer John is hiring a new herd leader for his cows. He has interviewed n of them, where n is an integer from 2 to 100,000 cows for the position. After interviewing the ith cow, he gave her an integer competency score, which is c sub i, and that ranges from 1 to big C inclusive, where big C is an integer from 1 to 1 billion. Because he has interviewed so many cows, Farmer John does not remember all of their competency scores, but he does remember q pairs of numbers a and h where cow H is the first cow with a strictly greater competency score than cows 1 through A. You're given the sequence C sub 1 all the way to C sub N, where C sub I being 0 means that he forgot cow I's competency score, and he also gives you Q pairs A and H. You want to help him find the lexicographically smallest sequence of scores that is consistent with this information, or tell him that it doesn't exist. Here's a sample input for the problem, where we have n is 7 and q is 3. We can see that our constraints are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 4, 5. And initially, for the scores of all the cows, if you pretend that the poniard at the bottom are cows, and the sores represent their scores, you can see that cow 1 has a score of 1, cow 3 has a score of 2, cow 4 has a score of 3, and cow 6 has a score of 4. As for the scores of cows 2, 5, and 7, we don't know them, so we have to fill them with values such that they are consistent with the constraints we're given and that the final array is the lexicographically minimum. So the solution to this test case would be something like this. And you can see that the swords that we have to add are the ones that have the teal box surrounding them. You'll notice that cow 2 has to have a score of at least 2, because of the constraint where a is 1 and h is 2. So cow 2 has to be the first cow with a score greater than cow 1. We can also see that cow 5 has to have a score of at least 4, because cow 5 has to be the first cow to be greater than cows from 1 to 4, which is given by the constraint a is 4 and h is 5. The constraint where a is 3 and h is 4 is already satisfied because cow 4 is the first cow to be greater than all cows from 1 to 3. Lastly, because cow 7 is not directly involved in any constraint, we don't really care about her, so we can give her any score. In this case, we give her a 1, because that produces a lexicographically minimum array. When I solve a problem like this, I think it is helpful to redefine the constraints in a way that is easier to work with. So when the problem asks us, to find the lexicographically minimum array that satisfies all Q queries or constraints, this is a very complicated thing to think about. So instead, let's just think about one query and let's ignore the condition that the array has to be lexicographically minimum. What does one query mean in the context of the problem? So if we have one pair of A and H, we know that cow H has to have a greater score than all cows from one to A. But because it has to be the first cow who is greater, we also have the condition like this. We have this inequality because we know that the maximum cow from cows 1 to A has to be greater than or equal to the maximum score from cows A plus 1 to H minus 1. And this is because if any cow from A plus 1 to H minus 1 has a greater score than the maximum from 1 to A, then cow h is no longer the first cow to have a score greater. So 
the query of a and h can be reformulated into these two inequalities. So we still have a bit of an issue in that this is still very difficult to think about. But we can notice that cows 1 through a, well, that's the same as the prefix of length a, right? And the maximum from cows 1 to a is the prefix maximum at a in the array c. So maybe it's helpful to try to think about the problem in terms of the prefix maximums. With that, we can take the original two inequalities over here and turn them into these two inequalities. If we say p sub i is the maximum from cows 1 to i, right? That's the same as the prefix maximum at i. So we know that the prefix maximum at h is going to be greater than the prefix maximum at h minus 1. And the prefix maximums from a, a plus 1, all the way to h minus 1 have to be the same. And we can notice that under these constraints, cow h will still be the first cow greater than all cows from 1 to a. Why is that? Well, if there was an earlier cow that was greater, then the prefix maximums from a, a plus 1, all to h minus 1 won't be the same, right? So if we know that they're all equal and cow h is the first one to make the prefix maximum greater, then it will be the first cow with the score greater than all cows from 1 to a. Now, we did all that for one query, but this idea can be applied to all q of our queries. So let's take an example set of queries here and apply it on an array of length 8, and we'll see what we can get. So the first query, which is 1 and 3, will have our prefix maximum array looking like this. Because cow 3 is the first cow to be greater than cow 1, then we know that the prefix maximum of 2 is equal to the prefix maximum of 1. And we know that the prefix maximum of 3 is going to be greater than the prefix maximum of 2. Moving on to the next constraint, 6 and 7, well, this tells us that cow 7 is the first cow to be greater than all cows from 1 to 6. So p sub 7 is going to be greater than p sub 6. The next query gives us 4 and 7, right? a is 4 and h is 7. And this tells us that cow 7 is not only going to be the first cow greater than all cows from 1 to 6, but also the first cow greater than the cows from 1 to 4. And this tells us that the prefix maximum does not increase from 4 to 5 to 6. Lastly, we have this query on 2 and 3, which doesn't change our prefix maximum array. So now we have a set of constraints that looks like this. And we can see a structure to all these constraints, all these new constraints on the prefix maximum array. We have segments of equal prefix maximums. For example, from 4, 5 to 6, all these prefix maximums are equal. And we also have situations where the prefix maximum at some index is going to be greater than the prefix maximum before that, for example, from 2 to 3. And you'll notice that there are some empty spots here, for example, from 3 to 4. This just means that the prefix maximum at 4 is greater than or equal to the prefix maximum at 3. It can be either case because that's just how prefix maximums are normally defined, right? So we have no extra constraints here. Now we have the full set of constraints that we produce from the given Q queries. And we know that any array C whose prefix maximum array satisfies these constraints will produce a valid answer. There is a small caveat though, and it can be illustrated with these properties of p sub i being equal to p sub i plus one all the way to p sub j. So let's look at some properties of a subarray of contiguous equal prefix maximums. We know that at least one of these two statements has to hold. The first is that the prefix maximum at i is equal to the maximum score from cows i to j. And also, the prefix maximum at i is greater than the prefix maximum at i minus 1. This is the same as saying from cow i minus 1 to i, we have a new largest element, right? So p sub i is greater than p sub i minus 1. 
And also, because the prefix maximums from i to j are equal, there can be no bigger elements than i in this range. The other case is where we inherit the prefix maximum from i minus 1. So the prefix maximum at i would be equal to the prefix maximum at i minus 1. And it would also have to be true that no cow in the range i to j is greater than this prefix maximum at i minus 1. And we can see this happening in this case if we have the array C being equal to 0, 1, 0, 5, 3. And let's say that the prefix maximum from 1, 0, 5, and 3 has to be the same. This means that an array like this doesn't work. Why is that? Well, the prefix maximum from 2 is 1, but the prefix maximum at 4 is 5. So we can see that the prefix maximums are not equal on this contiguous orange interval. So this is bad. But we can fix it if we include the zero on the left in our contiguous subarray of equal prefix maximums, right? So if we force the prefix maximum at this zero right here to be equal to the prefix maximums of the arrest of the rest of the array, which is following these two constraints we mentioned earlier, we can get an array that looks like this, 5, 1, 1, 5, 3. And now we see that all these prefix maximums are equal. They're all 5. And the reason why we have to include this element 0 is that because if we only have 1, 0, 5, and 3, well, p sub i, right, cannot be the maximum from cows i to j. Why is that? because the maximum is 5, right? The maximum from i to j is 5. But because we cannot change this value of 1, unless the prefix maximum before it is large enough, which is the second case over here, we will not be able to produce a valid array. So what we actually have to do is extend the segment of equal elements left until we satisfy this condition right here, that the leftmost element, which is cow sub i, which is c sub i, sorry, is going to be the maximum from all cows i to j, or c sub i zero, which means that it could be any number, and thus we can satisfy the maximum if needed. Note that we don't want to go left if we have already satisfied this, because if we already satisfied this constraint, there is no need to further apply more constraints, right? We want to give ourselves as many options as possible. So we only extend a segment of equal prefix maximums left while this condition is not satisfied. And obviously, if we ever have something like this, where the prefix maximum at i has to be greater than the prefix maximum at i minus 1, and the condition that the prefix maximum at i is equal to the prefix maximum at i minus 1, these two things are mutually exclusive. They cannot be true at the same time. So if we ever come across this, we can immediately return negative one because this is not possible. Now we are ready to fill in the unknown values of the competency scores, which is when c sub i is equal to zero. If i is the leftmost element of a segment of equal prefix maximums, we know that the score has to be greater than or equal to all scores from i to j as previously discussed. But we also have to be careful if the prefix maximum at i is greater than the prefix maximum at i minus 1. In that case, we also have to ensure that the score at i is greater than the prefix maximum at i minus 1 so that our prefix maximum increases, right? So we have to check both of these conditions, right? And because we are finding the lexicographically minimum array that satisfies these conditions, we will pick the minimum value that satisfies these two inequalities if they apply. If we are unable to change the value of c, we have to ensure that all the prefix maximum conditions that we previously calculated are satisfied, and this can be done pretty simply. So now we have a, now we have a way to fill in all the unknown values of c, and we just have to check at the end if it's valid. With that, we can produce an O of n solution to this problem. That's all I have. Thank you for watching.